Hello, I made a red suit inspired by this red suit from a brand called Dynasty. And if you want to check out how I made it, stay tuned. To make this blazer, I started out by cutting the main fabric. I cut the back bodice on fold, I cut two sleeves, two front bodices and two lapel facings, which are just half of the front bodice. If you want to check out the pattern pieces I used, I will put a link in the description. And I also link to tutorials for drafting your own blazer pattern and a more detailed tutorial on how to put it together. I then cut two colors on the bias, one was cut in fold and the other one was cut in two halves. Here you can see all the pattern pieces cut out. You want to cut notches marking the midpoint on the collar and you also want to mark where the lapel starts on the neckline so you know where to stop when attaching the collar. You should also mark the breakpoint on the facing and the breakpoint on the front bodice. This is the markings for the pocket placement and this is the dart markings for the back bodice. I also went ahead and marked the middle of the sleeve head. Here I am cutting out the lining. I cut the back bodice on fold, the side panel of the front bodice and two sleeves. You want to cut every piece of the lining and the facing one inch shorter than the main fabric. Here are all the lining pieces. I did not sew any darts in the lining fabric, so the only marking I made was a notch at the middle of the sleeve head. The pieces you see here are the interfacing for the facing and the collar. I also went ahead and cut out two squares of fabric for the weld pockets and interfacing to go with it. These squares just need to be widened on the desired length of your weld pockets and their height should be around 3 inches. I cut the shape of the flaps for the weld pockets in the interfacing and then just made sure to have two squares that are bigger than the interfacing in the actual fabric so I could just sew around it to create the actual flap. Lastly I cut out two squares of the lining fabric to use as pocket bags. Don't know if this is what they're actually called but it sounds like a good name for them. Here I am ironing on the interfacing for the respective pieces. Next I created the weld pockets. I started by drawing a narrow rectangle that had the desired length of my weld pockets and a height of half an inch. In my case the length of the rectangle was 4.5 inches. I then pinned the top corners of this rectangle to my markings on my front bodice. And then just sew a straight stitch on the lines of the rectangle. Also, you want to sew the square to the right side of the fabric. Next, you want to cut inside the rectangle to open it up so you can turn the square inside out. Please refer to the picture to see how to cut it open. Here I am just prepping the square before I turn it to the other side and then when I turn it to the other side I went ahead and ironed it so that it lies nice and flat. After ironing you want to fold the bottom of the square so that it covers the opening, if that makes sense. And then just iron it flat to keep it in place. Next I created the flaps for the pockets. I layered two pieces of the main fabric on top of each other and then just used the interfacing as a guide to sew around it. After sewing it, I cut off the edges and turned it inside out and gave it a press. After turning it inside out, it should be the same length as your opening for the weld pocket and in my case that was 4.5 inches. Slide the flap into the pocket opening and make sure that it's straight. You then want to top stitch around the upper part starting 0.5 inches down the side. Now it's time to attach the pocket bags. Sew the square piece of lining with the right side down to the bottom of the pocket square. I 
I then cut off the excess fabric on the top of the square, leaving the seam allowance. Then I folded the lining piece up and attached it to the upper part of the square. Lastly, I sewed down the sides of the pocket bag to finish it. Then I trimmed off any excess fabric and then the pocket was done. Next I put the lining pieces together. I sewed the facing to the front bodice side panel and sewed the side seams of the sleeves. Next I sewed the back bodice to the front bodice. I sewed the shoulder seams and the side seams together. I also went ahead and attached the sleeves. Here we can see the whole lining part assembled and all that's missing is a collar. To attach the collar, line the middle of the curved side of the collar to the middle of the back bodice. Then pin the collar at the point where you made the notch on the neckline, but do not pin down or sew the side seam allowance of the collar. Then assemble the main fabric in the exact same way. After I attached the sleeves to the main fabric bodice, it was time to add shoulder pads. I folded the pad in half and then lined up that half mark with the shoulder seam. I then sewed the shoulder pad down, stitching only on the seam allowance of the arm opening so that there will be no visible stitches on the right side of the fabric. I also tacked the shoulder pad to the shoulder seam allowance. To attach the collar to the main fabric bodice, I just sewed the two collar parts together and then attached it like I did for the lining. Here you can just see how I left the seam allowance at the end of the collar. Now it's time to attach the main fabric and the lining bodices together. Put the lining and the main fabric wrong sides together, then find the wrist part of the sleeves and then sew the sleeve openings right sides together. Next sew the top parts of the two collars wrong sides together, again leaving the seam allowance. Sew the sides of the colors wrong sides together, but do not sew past the stitch attaching the color to the bodice. After this you want to sew the top part of the lapels wrong sides together, continuing the stitch that attaches the color to the bodice. This will all make much more sense if you actually do it. Next, sew the lapel sides wrong sides together, stopping half an inch before the lining stops. Then I went ahead and top stitched the top and the bottom of the collar to make it more stable. Next, cut the breakpoint notch as close to the stitch line as possible and understitch the seam allowance of the lapel to the facing when sewing south of the breakpoint notch and to the main fabric when north of the notch. This, as well as a good press, will help the lapel turn where it's supposed to. Now sew the bottom of the lining to the bottom of the main fabric. You want to do this wrong sides together. 
you want to leave a 5 inch opening in the middle of the blazer so you can turn the whole thing inside out. After this, stitch up the little gap that was left on the bottom side of the lapel. After turning the whole thing inside out, top stitch the opening together. After doing this, you can no longer insert the inside of your blazer unless you open it up again. So make sure everything is like it's supposed to be. And that's it! You're done!